Next up is from Scott R. He has a short question. Um, do either of you have any favorite quotes from a charisma book you've read that have moved you? From sure, a charisma book that I've read? Maybe just I got, a, I got a bunch. Uh, well, why don't you start then? No one wins an argument. That was a life-changing quote for me. Mm -hmm. That's Dale Carnegie. I really liked to try to show off my intellect by arguing about things and then besting people. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't make anyone like you. It doesn't make the audience like you. It doesn't make the person you're bickering with like you. So mm -hmm. that was a big one for me. I like that a lot. No one wins an argument. Interesting. What else? Because <laughs> I don't have to. Sure. This one's by, it's not charisma related. It's in the four hour work week, but it's actually from Machiavelli's The Prince. And it is um, make mistakes of ambition and not mistakes of sloth. Develop the strength to do bold things and not the strength to suffer. And that for me hit me at a point in my life where I was working a job I didn't like, but is a good job. Dating someone who is amazing, but I didn't think was right for me. And I was getting very good at just dealing with it going i don't want to be in this relationship but i'll make the best of it i don't want to be at this job but i'll make the best of it and, I, and when i read that quote i went wow i am uh i am developing the strength to suffer in a you know dr dramatic way which is to yeah. say i'm getting good at being happy despite not liking the decisions i'm making and the quote really inspired me to go you know what let's let's screw up by chasing what we actually want Mm -hmm. instead of being afraid that I'll die alone if I end this relationship. Let's try to actually get the relationship we want. And instead of being scared that I will starve to death if I actually pursued my dream business, let's let's do it. Let's not get really good at sleeping under the desk and, and yeah. having fun in a cubicle. So yeah, that was a life-changing quote for me. I'm trying to think. I don't know that they're charisma related. I actually have a document in my Google Drive that is just all the quotes that I've liked over the various years, and some of them mm. I'm sure have stuck with me. The one that comes to mind as being charisma related, it's Mark Twain. And I don't know if it was a character to another character, but it starts with, son, always be honest. That way you'll never have to remember what you said last time. Yeah, yeah, I love that one. <laughs> I love that quote. I really like it because honesty is often presented as the moral choice. Do it because it's right. But really, it's going to hurt you. Yeah, disadvantageous, but the right thing to do. But the right do. thing to do. And that made me recognize that it's the, it's the smart thing from a selfish perspective. Yeah, I've it's, seen that in my own life, oh too. Oh, my gosh. What a cognitive weight to not have to manage the, the lies that you're telling. And your, your life gets better. When, yeah. you, when you tell your employers that you're going to leave because you want to start a business, yeah. they don't hate you for it. They actually go, what business? Or when mm -hmm. you're in the dating world and you tell people, oh, I, this is the kind of relationship I want. It's the only way that you get the kind of relationship yeah. that you want. So, mm -hmm. yeah, funny enough, honesty is the best policy because it's moral, but also because it's what gets you the life you actually want. Totally. And yeah. I've talked about this in, in Charisma on Command videos, but I think the best analogy for honesty, if you're not yet convinced, is being honest is like paying in cash. And telling lies is like paying in credit with a very high interest rate. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and what ultimately happens is that when... When somebody is lied, 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 and they have to, they're confronted with the truth, they go, Oh man, telling the truth sucks. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. this is gonna suck so bad. And it's like, No, this is a result of you having gone out on credit and now you're paying it back with interest like this this was a result of the lie not of telling the truth had you told the truth you would have had a small uncomfortable conversation but and even i don't i'm not saying that you've done this poorly but uh there's been some level of communication breakdown with that earlier question from the 18 year old who's living at home and it's like these conversations had sooner and maybe you are even are having it sooner are better than if you were 22 and now you've got four years of interest on the lie that you've been telling your mom that you want to live at home forever, right? So that that's just another thing to consider is even we often associate pain with telling the truth. And really, that's that's the lie disguising itself. I like it. Uh, I have a ton other, but they're not they're not charisma. Related. No, it's fine. Give us one more. All models are wrong, but some are useful, I think is one of my favorites. Interesting. Uh, so... I will teach you guys the four emotions to uh, to make a great first impression. You will learn the spiral dynamic uh, way of understanding humans. You'll uh, you'll learn formulas and all these kinds of things to try to understand the world. The first part of the quote, "All models are wrong," says that you cannot possibly simplify the complexity of reality mm -hmm. into a single statement, and that's true, right? Do these four emotions work? 
guaranteed every person who has ever lived all the way throughout history without a modicum of no there's of course there's going to be slight <laughs> there's slight adjustments nah. now the question is is it useful and the answer is Yes, it's incredibly useful because these work almost every time. And quite frankly, if you go out and do it, you're going to see. And it feels like it works every time. But to boil human interaction down into any sentence is necessarily to cut out some nuance. Be, I mean, uh, infinite nuance, quite frankly. But it just might not be pertinent to your goal. Mm. Uh, so that's what I often think. Some like, and And when I get locked into any sort of ideological thinking of this is how it ought to be done and this this principle needs to apply i try to remember like this is just a tool and when the tool stops working drop it and pay attention to reality mm -hmm. uh so if there's ever a transformation and those four emotions no longer create first impressions i will not stay attached to those four emotions i will rebuild a new model based on reality up to now they seem to they seem to do just fine nice cool